Additionally, Valley has showed dominance over uh, some of the Des Moines opponents and uh, other po naturally several of the opponents that they uh, play against. But it was kind of just this nice, easy, let's see what we can get done. Now with that sense of urgency, Valley has really picked up the tempo. It'll be interesting to see now how the defense can respond being off the field as long as they have been. You know, how do you handle being off the field? Are you resting? Are you getting a good talking to? Are you hyping yourself up and wasting energy that you need to have on the field? And so I'll be interested to see after a couple of real big defensive series by Valley, how they respond here. Because on the other side, you know Roosevelt has wanted this ball back. Valley, the last time they were on the field defensively, it took one play, and they were able to force their second fumble of the night. Meanwhile, for Roosevelt, trying to rekindle that flame that they had earlier here in the quarter, where they were able to get a 20-yard touchdown from Jaden Coger. One-handed catch by Coger. Breaks off one tackle, and finally he's smothered by a set of Tigers there. A great effort by the senior Jaden Coger, but he did stay in bounds, and that keeps the clock rolling. Yes, you have two bits of motivation or two thoughts that you're really trying to work on as you keep this ball. You want to keep the ball out of Valley's hands before half, and you want to have as many good things happen as you can. Um, maybe not a false start. Um, we'll see uh, what uh, the flag is here. It looks like it is going to be five yards against uh, Roosevelt. So that's certainly not something that they wanted. But as much as it was, you know, a, a five-yard penalty, it hasn't been a killer yet because of their overall team speed. But, again, they want to keep the ball out of Valley's hands, and they want to move down the field. If they happen to break it, they will take the big play. And we do have a programming note that the Waukee Southeast Poke game is now being streamed on YouTube. And what a good game that is. Waukee leading at half 10 to 7. First down for the Rough Riders. A big gain by Roosevelt is Farag, who's been pretty active for the Rough Riders here in this first half, not only making the catch, but also knowing, too, to run out of bounds. Absolutely, and he did a great job. A long crossing pattern. you got to give Roosevelt's offensive line a lot of credit. It is a strong experienced Valley defensive line, and they were able to hold them out as that long building crossing pattern comes across. Uh, they pick up the first down. They're doing everything they should be right now in the playbook, keeping everything low, see what you can do as far as breaking a big play later. Pat pressured from behind and then actually ran into his own offensive lineman, and that'll be a loss of yards for the Rough Riders. And Mo Darbo, uh, not necessarily a very fun guy to run into. He is a big, big man. Yeah, 6'2", 280. And so Roosevelt is forced to call a timeout in what's been a lengthy first half. You know, kickoff was at 7. It's now 8.30. It has been a long first half here at Valley Stadium. In part to the two-minute timeouts, mandatory right. timeouts that they take every four minutes, and in part two, the not having the cleanest game execution-wise with a lot of penalties on both sides. Uh, but now, as of late, with the quick scoring that's going on and taking the time in between uh, the touchdown and PAT, the PAT to the kickoff, and now a timeout by Roosevelt. So each team with one timeout left, it'll be... Second down and 12 upcoming for the Rough Riders with 23.3 seconds to go here in what's been an exciting and long first half here at Valley Stadium. Valley got things started with a 27-yard field goal back in the first quarter, but then Roosevelt was able to score a touchdown at the 332 mark here in this second quarter, but Valley with 14 unanswered points. Screen pass, caught, but being smothered there that time by Mason DeBrava. 
who, again, we've called his name time and time again, and he's just done a great job of tackling in space. He really has because if you recall early on, those passes out into the flats creating a one-on-one -on -one between the receiver and the defensive back has kind of gone Roosevelt's way. And now we saw Valley come up, buzz their feet, step into the tackle, and finish that out the way it's supposed to be done. So a strong finish by the Valley defense, and they will take a 17-7 lead into the locker room over Des Moines Roosevelt. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back with halftime next on CISN.TV. Hi, I'm Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and this has been a crazy year. We might just run out of furniture, but we still have a great selection right now. We have wicker, we have fire pits, we have poly, and if you want something for your deck this year, you should come see us right now. Still have the greatest selection in Iowa at the best prices. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas, just west of Homemade. There's more to love with these savings at Fairway. This week, fresh salmon filet portions are buy one, get one free. Frito-Lay, Lay's, or Kettle Cook chips are only $1.99. Fairway waffles are buy two, get one more free. Kraft cheese is three for $5 when you buy three with your coupon. Fresh, fast, affordable. Fairway. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Obsessively, relentlessly, that's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away, delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 Trax or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WaukeeChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. It's halftime here at Valley Stadium. The top-ranked Valley Tigers leading the Roosevelt Rough Riders 17-7. And, man, what a, what a first half, Keith, that we saw, a, a lengthy first half. And stuff that you're going to see, there's going to be miscues and just kind of the flow of the game, just all of that combined. But, man, what a final two minutes for the Valley Tigers as they were down at one point to, to Roosevelt. They were, and... You know, as you watched this game from the start, you expected strong defense from both sides. I don't think there's anybody that would argue one side was going to just monopolize uh, defensively uh, tonight. Both teams have a very strong defense. So then the question becomes, how is everybody's offense going to play? Roosevelt has such a young player uh, under center, he's leading this team, but he certainly does not play like a young player. He plays like a seasoned veteran, and he's doing a great job. But a couple of miscues, as you were saying, a couple overthrows here, uh, a couple underthrows here, defense doing their job just trying to disrupt. And both sides have done their share of disrupting. Well, you see the Valley Marching Band along with the dance team there making their final preparations for our halftime presentation. We will step aside and let them take it away. Please go to the field, the Valley Mud Tractors. Mud Tractors are one of the fields by Dunlake and Maybell. Our 
Great performance by the Valley March Masters at halftime. Once again, our score, 17 to seven. Valley over Roosevelt Hunter Phillips. Keith Horn is delighted to have you with us. And uh, yeah, like we were mentioning before the March Masters came out, uh, it's, it's just been a wild start to this 2020 season. Great defensive battle, but then Valley's offense was start, starting to wake up there at late in the first half. Yeah, indeed. But I, I'm going to go back just a little bit to that halftime show. As expected, Josh Waymeyer and crew put together a great halftime performance. From the Ashes is the uh, title of the show this year. A beautiful job. We wish them the very best of luck all the way through. And Bailey Watke, again, a twirling sensation. So thanks for that great performance. Now back to football. Yes, Roosevelt coming out strong. Both teams wanting to control the line of scrimmage. And for the most part, it's a draw at the line. Valley's offense getting a push. Roosevelt's defense not giving any ground. They're filling their gaps so well, they're not getting people, Valley's not able to move them out. On the other side of the ball, Roosevelt is doing such a tremendous job just lulling Valley's defense to sleep with these nice little dunk passes out into the flats, the crossing patterns that for the most part, Valley has been able to manage, but it's that one miscue, it's that bad step, it's that one time that Roosevelt utilizes its speed that it turns into a huge play, and that is why we have a tight score right now. So again, it was three to nothing Valley after the first quarter, but then we saw all the touchdowns scored there in the second quarter, including 14 unanswered points by the Tigers who lead by 10. Here at halftime, we're going to take another break. When we come back, we'll get you ready for the second half here on CISN.TV. Central Bank is proud to support the unmatched spirit of sportsmanship and hard work exemplified by our local athletes. We're fans of high school sports and the way the big game and hometown team rally a community. Best of luck to all of today's competitors. Play hard, have fun, and make something great happen. Central Bank, member FDIC. We might not always know what the day will bring, but some things are certain. The sun will rise and your lights will go on. That's because at MidAmerican Energy, we're obsessively, relentlessly committed to providing you energy when and where you need it, to connecting with you and keeping our communities safe and strong. Because the most important thing we put our energy into is you. We're obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Hi, I'm Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and this has been a crazy year. We might just run out of furniture, but we still have a great selection right now. We have wicker, we have fire pits, we have poly, and if you want something for your deck this year, you should come see us right now. Still have the greatest selection in Iowa at the best prices. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas, just west of Homemade. Certain, the sun will rise and your lights will go on. That's because at MidAmerican Energy, we're obsessively, relentlessly committed to providing you energy when and where you need it, to connecting with you and keeping our communities safe and strong. Because the most important thing we put our energy into is you. We're obsessively, relentlessly at your service. There's more to love with these savings at Fairway. This week, fresh salmon filet portions are buy one, get one free. Frito-Lay, Lay's, or Kettle Cook chips are only $1.99. Fairway waffles are buy two, get one more free. Craft cheese is three for five dollars when you buy three with your coupon. Fresh, fast, affordable. Fairway. Welcome back here to Valley Stadium in West Des Moines on CISN.TV. Hunter Phillips along with Keith Bornis, our producer Anna Bassett. We're delighted to have you with us on this Friday night. We do apologize for the technical difficulties uh, earlier in our broadcast. We are Streaming live here on YouTube, so make sure to tell your family and friends that that is where you can find us as well as other games on CISN.TV. 
Beginning week one of the 2020 season, 17 to seven, the top ranked Valley Tigers lead the Roosevelt Rough Riders. The Tigers will get the ball to begin the second half. So Keith, what is the message to both of these teams as we're about to begin the second half? Well, both coaches are personnel coaches. They believe in their athletes. They expect the most out of their athletes. And so when they go into the locker room, there might be some excitement and things like that, but they're not going to point fingers. They're going to say, here is where we need to improve. It's not going to be, this is what you did or didn't do. They talk about the great things that they have done and what they need to change. If we want to win this game, this is the direction we're going to go. As far as Roosevelt's side, they just need to continue to execute, stay focused, continue to work on their short passes that can become big plays. Valley... On their side, it's all about follow-through. They have got a good start, and then somebody leaks through. They get another good start, they have an incomplete pass. They have another good start, and something happens, a penalty. So cleaning a few things up, but finishing the play, following through and finishing it through. Well, the, the battle at the line of scrimmage has been a lot of fun to watch <laughs> for both teams here tonight. But we did see the running game start to open up for both teams in the tail end of the second quarter. We saw Jaden Coger bust off for a 30-yard run, and that resulted in what was a receiving touchdown for him. But then the Valley Tigers, we know that their ground game is really strong. Jaden Williams nearly had two touchdowns there in the second quarter. He had a four-yard run, and then Jake Rubley took it to the house for his first touchdown as a Valley Tiger. So while the battle at the line of scrimmage has been very good thus far the running game has been starting to open up a little bit it has and so if we look forward to this second half the question becomes how did they utilize halftime where was there a bunch of raw raw burning energy or was it a situation where okay we got this we just got to settle back in and at the appropriate time when we go and do our warm-up when we get ready to receive the kick for valley or be ready to kick off for Roosevelt how you turn it on when you turn it on uh, so if both teams which I expect both teams utilize their halftime very well to regain some composure so we are moments away from kickoff here in the second half again it's been a success here in week one all the fans are socially distanced here at Valley Stadium, of course, there are a pour of students outside of the stadium <laughs> along the fence. They have been loud. We could hear them all the way here from the press box. It's not the same Friday night feeling that we've had in years past, no. but at least we have one partner. We do have a Friday night. The blue tape social distance in the stadium and the non-blue tape not so socially distanced outside the fence. And I'm sure that is going to be something that will be addressed as this season continues on. And having said that, I do want to take time and really thank uh, Dr. Lisa Ramey and her leadership as far as what she has done to try everything in her power. Her administrative staff has done a great job trying to get school to be as normal as possible and as safe as possible. So thank you for the leadership that she has shown and uh, good luck to us all. Absolutely. Again, so many hurdles to jump over before and now, but we're so lucky to have football here tonight. Rough Riders kick it off to the Tigers to begin the third quarter, received inside the five. And Valley will start things off here in the second half from just inside the 25-yard line. How about the athleticism that we just saw with Danny Rankin as he returned that kickoff Got turned as the, his shoulder pads got smashed pretty hard on a great hit there by the coverage man. Danny was able to spin out of that and gain another seven yards. Uh, you know, all in all, minus mistakes and turnovers, this is as about as good a field position as Valley has had for starting in a normal football sense, uh, just back and forth football tonight. So uh, from the 23... Valley's offense from out of the locker room. We'll see how it goes. And in their last two drives, they have taken it to the house. Jake Rubley back under center, making his debut 
tonight for the Tigers. Jaden Williams, who had a monster end of the half, has the carry, but he gives up the football. Roosevelt gets on top of it, and it's a lead-off turnover for Valley, and Roosevelt fired up here to begin this third quarter. Boy, that is certainly something that is a momentum changer. As a coach on the offensive side, you will never – get upset with somebody who is fighting for those extra yards but when you fight for those extra yards you want to make sure that ball security is number one uh, making sure that you have fired up here to as begin many this third points quarter. covered Boy, as you possibly can as you run into contact roosevelt side a great opportunity for them to get their offense back on the field and uh, see what they can do with a heavy dose of number one and that is Jaden coger who scored the lone touchdown for the Rough Riders in the first half. We should mention that Roosevelt has a defense, recovered 14 fumbles last year, fourth in class, 4A. A very good defensive team as Coger sprints to the outside, makes a man miss. And that should be enough for a first down, or it'll be maybe just shy, but a great opening run for Jaden Coger, the senior. They did call it a first down. Oh, no, just short. Second down as the clock continues to run. Rough Riders up here to begin quick this to work. Quarter. Boy, they go back to the bell cow of Coger, and he will get across to move the chains. First down, Roosevelt. Side, you will never. And you just have to think that that forced fumble was just what the doctor ordered for second-year head coach Mitch Moore here to begin this second half here on the road against the top-ranked team in the state. And you, speaking of Coach Mitch Moore, you talk about how uh, just professionally he is. Uh, you talk to him. I had an opportunity to communicate with him earlier this week, and he said, we're so excited to be able to come over and play a class program like Valley. That is something, you know, he's a young coach. He's an excited coach. He's really changing the culture there, but yet – he wants to make sure I am as professional and a great role model and a great example for my players, just like all the great coaches in the state of Iowa and across the country are as well. All the young men who are a part of that program at Roosevelt just have nothing but great things to say about Coach Moore and the rest of that staff who is starting to build a great program over there and the western part of Des Moines, but they did have to call a timeout. There was some confusion on offense and what was going to be a first and ten play. So we'll see what Roosevelt is able to do out of the timeout to clarify any kind of confusion they must have had on offense. Again, sophomore quarterback under center, Jamison Patton, but he is playing like an upperclassman thus far. The give is to Coger. Cuts to his left. Finds an opening. Coger, end zone. Touchdown, Rough Riders. A fantastic run by Coker, but, man, that was set up by a tremendous block downfield by Christian Guerrero. A monster hit, monster block to uh, free Coker as uh, – Valley defenders were starting to make their way and close in on them. Second touchdown of the night for Coger. Had a receiving touchdown in the second quarter. And now tack on a 23-yard touchdown run. The extra point attempt was blocked and is unable to reach the goalpost. So Valley is able to stimmy the Rough Riders once again on a kicking attempt. But now we'll see how the Tigers will respond after this timeout. 10.51 to go in the third quarter. Just a four-point game here on CISN.TV. Make this summer one to remember with these savings at Fairway. This week, USDA Choice Top of Iowa Sirloin Steak is just $4.99 a pound. Stella Bella Green Seedless Grapes are only $1.88 a pound. Ritz Crackers are just $1.88. Coca-Cola or Sprite products are four for $9.98 when you buy four. Wishing you a fun-filled summer from our family to yours. Fairway.
At MidAmerican Energy, we put our energy into making communities stronger, safer, and ready for the future. We support STEM education and community safety, special events, and economic development activities. We energize our cities and towns just like we have for decades, all to help make your community the place where you want to build your business, your legacy, and your life. It's another way we're obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Valley on the field, leading 17 to 13 against a resurgent Roosevelt squad who was able to get a touchdown run from their star senior, Jaden Coger, and that came off of a turnover to begin the third quarter. So we'll see how the Tigers respond. That's right. It really is all about response. They had a great response with this kickoff return. Danny Rankin able to have a very nice 35-yard uh, kick return to set Valley up in good field position. The give is to Jaden Williams, who fumbled earlier, but has a lot of room downfield. A big gain for the senior. And you can see some of the Valley players, including Cale Nessheim, fired up. And a big run for number seven. 19 yards on the gain. Kind of what you expected to see. A nice job of having that ball high and tight. Uh, this is this is one of those nights where you can't make the mistake. You have to be focused in, dialed in on every play, and every person's got to be there for their team. And the eye formation. It's Williams sheds a tackle, goes off to the right, and another big. Run there by Jaden Williams, who got off to a frustrating start to this ball game. But other than that fumble earlier here in the quarter, he's really starting to pick up a little bit. He really is. And kind of a testament there to the Roosevelt defense, just how fast it is. Jaden Williams on Valley's state title shuttle hurdle relay team, not last spring, but the spring before uh, for uh, Coach Trigstead's uh, running uh, staff there. Williams, they give it to him again. And another very good run on first down. Gain of five yards. And hear what we're seeing now. Valley's offense is moving down the field because their offensive line is getting such a better surge forward. Uh, it used to be wherever the ball carrier was tackled, he was by himself. Now, you're moving the ball six, seven yards down the field, and the offensive line has already gotten that push down there. And it looks like one of those offensive linemen is down for the Valley Tigers. We have an official timeout. 9.38 to go here in the third quarter. It's a four-point lead for Valley on CISN.TV. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 Trax or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WalkieChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WalkieChevy.com. Central Bank is proud to support the unmatched spirit of sportsmanship and hard work exemplified by our local athletes. We're fans of high school sports and the way the big game and hometown team rally a community. Best of luck to all of today's competitors. Play hard, have fun, and make something great happen. Central Bank, member FDIC. We've just crossed the 9 o'clock hour here on CISN.TV. You see number 7, Jaden Williams, slow to get up, but walks off on his own power. He's gotten some big runs here on this drive in the third quarter, and certainly someone, though, that the Tigers cannot be without his services. No, and, and uh, as we were watching him being tended to out there, uh, we're chalking another young man up to uh, cramping in the lower legs. And so now it's just what can we do to get him hydrated? What can we do to help with those crampings in the lower leg? Stepping right in is Danny Rankins, who had a couple of carries back in the first half. 
Goes for a few yards. They'll bring up third down for Valley. Trying to respond on their end after Roosevelt was able to notch a touchdown earlier here in the third quarter. Rubley taking a long look over at the sidelines. And now gets up to the line. Five on the play clock. To give to Rankins. Jets outside. He'll get the first down. Big run by Danny Rankins to move the chains for the Tigers. That was a big conversion. That was a big conversion. And a great job by Rankins setting up uh, that outside move, you know, faking inside and then being able to pop outside a little bit, creating separation, and then utilizing the great speed that he has as well. So the ball on the 12 for the Tigers, who have been able to run the ball successfully, getting it downfield against the Rough Riders, but primarily running on the outside, not between the tackles too much. But here we go here, it's Rankins trying to find some space on the left side. Gain of a couple. And again, a nice surge forward. Uh, Valley's offensive line is starting to get into that gap uh, and move uh, the defensive line of Roosevelt and just that steady push. What Roosevelt was doing to Valley early on, Valley starting to get back uh, here in the second half. Personnel change for the Tigers as it is second and eight. They're at the 10. Rubley in the shotgun. Throws to the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers! So a running touchdown and now a passing touchdown for Mr. Rubley. And it was senior to senior, Rubley to Matthew Mahoney. And that's just what the Tigers needed right there, Keith. Yes, again, an answer, a great response to uh, arguably one of Roosevelt's great drives that they had scored on. Uh, Valley came back and answered the call. And the extra point is on the way, and it is good. So now Valley has their largest lead of the night. That's an 11-point advantage for the Tigers with 7.19 to go in the third quarter here on CISN.TV. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. Without question, the COVID-19 pandemic created many disruptive changes in our lives. Some of us got sick, jobs and income were compromised, it was difficult to even spend time with family and friends. But one thing hasn't changed, and that's Westside Auto Pro's commitment to quality service, and that will never change. We're here to make sure you get maximum performance and reliability from your vehicle. So as we all move forward, keep Westside Auto Pros in mind. You've been through enough. We'll make sure your car is the least of your worries. Hi, I'm Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and this has been a crazy year. We might just run out of furniture, but we still have a great selection right now. We have wicker, we have fire pits, we have poly, and if you want something for your deck this year, you should come see us right now. Still have the greatest selection in Iowa at the best prices. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas, just west of Homemade. Welcome back here to Valley Stadium in West Des Moines on CISN.TV. 7.19 to go here in this third quarter. Exciting start to the second half as both teams have traded touchdowns, but Valley leading by 11, 24 to 13. Yeah, in the first half we saw both sides trading their defenses, showing how incredible their defenses were, people wanting to see an, an offensive explosion. We got that uh, in five minutes, 14 points. Well, there's a missed extra point, so uh, 13 points scored here in the uh, second half already, where it took seven days to get through that first <laughs> half. A yeah, first half that took just over an hour and a half. A lot of factors into that, of course, the mandatory timeouts. 
put in place to make sure that all the players and coaches are safe. But the running back, the quarterback, rather not safe there from no. the Valley defender. Miss, Mr. Larrick having something to say about uh, the read option that came up the middle. And uh, senior versus sophomore, the senior got at that time. And Larrick's got some length, too. It's 6-3. Now we'll see what Jamison Patton, sophomore quarterback, does here on second down. Throws it off to his right. Pass is complete. Oh, they called it incomplete. Oh, incomplete. Yep, nice job as uh, Valley converged on it. Uh, you, they always talk about uh, Coach Mitchell at freshman level. He's always talking, hey, we got to get 11 hats to the ball, 11 hats to the ball. And uh, the swarming defense that came in from the uh, uh, linebackers and D-backs there knocked that ball loose a little bit later. They never had possession of it or solid possession of it for a nice uh, defensive play by Valley. Farag was the intended target. But, yeah, to your point, Valley's DBs have done a good job of making contact and making Roosevelt earn it whenever they've gotten their hands on the ball. And, again, Farag... Unable to haul that one in. It'll bring up fourth down and 11 for Roosevelt. Deep in Valley territory, and they're going to have to punt. Now, so very good stand by Valley's defense. Indeed. It's going to be what team can muster up the energy to continue to play at a high level. Danny Abby. Rankins is going to be back deep to... Uh -huh. Receive the punt for Valley. They, you know, Roosevelt's been running that uh, rugby-style kick into the near boundary. That's trouble. Oh! What do we got here? Did Valley get on top of it? We're going to see here. If Roosevelt got back on the ball, that is impressive. It is a safety. Roosevelt got back on the ball. What we saw happen was it went over the kicker's head, the punter's head. He went back. It was deep enough. You try to get rid of that ball, make sure it gets out of the back of the end zone. But he took the kick at it and missed. Uh, Valley was there first. But uh, Roosevelt, great heads-up play to cover that ball and save potentially five points, but four for sure. Abdullah is the punter for Roosevelt. But, again, Valley on special teams, no matter if it's been – PATs, kicking opportunities for, for Roosevelt, and like there, they've just done a great job of bringing the pressure. Well, you take a look at it. Uh, uh, Roosevelt missed on a block field goal. They got their seven their uh, conversion after the touchdown, their PAT. Then they had another touchdown. PAT was blocked. Uh, now we have over the head snap, two points here for Valley. Uh, when they say the kicking game is a third of the game, uh, it's really holding true tonight. Yes, it certainly is. So after the safety, Roosevelt is going to have to kick it. 26-13 Valley on top of the Rough Riders. Been a wild third quarter. Short kick collected at the 30. And Mahoney brought down right at the big Valley Tiger logo at midfield, and that's where the Tigers will set things up. Coming off a touchdown drive, 10-yard touchdown pass from Jake Rubley to Matthew Mahoney, and it looks like number seven is in the huddle here. Jaden Williams, he came off of the field, looked like a cramp that he had back in the last drive, but good to see number seven out there. So we'll see what the Tigers can drum up here. Ridley. Off the play action, or RPO, he yeah. goes for it. Had a nice read to keep the ball and start moving up. Um, he did have another option there, but chose to keep it and got the three-yard gain. Does have a rushing touchdown tonight. This time he airs it out, finds his man. 
And that'll be enough for the first down for the Tigers. And that's a Kale Nessheim. They connected on a beautiful connection there in the end of the second quarter. Yes, big play that kind of had a uh, lot of uh, momentum turn here. Now we're going to have another cramp. Uh, as the later this game goes on, the longer it plays, the more opportunities there are to cramp up. Uh, so important that uh, the guys, when they come off the field, they get watered up. Uh, they could have drank seven gallons a day uh, all week and still would have had uh, tough sledding tonight with uh, the temperature and, and uh, the, just the exertion that both squads are putting on out there. Uh, you have to be impressed by that, but it takes its toll as we set up, sweat all that energy out. So while we do have a timeout here, wanted to just take a look at the upcoming schedule for the Tigers and a uh, pretty big game, I'd say, uh, next week uh, here at Valley Stadium. It's going to be a road game for the Tigers. They'll face number three, Dowling Catholic. Of course, a rematch of last year's state title game, as it's good to see Kale Nessheim get back up. But a tough schedule for the Tigers. We'll dive deeper into that throughout the broadcast, but no easy tasks for the Tigers no, this season. No. We knew it was going to be a tough game tonight. Uh, Roosevelt really turning themselves into a class program, a scary program, because athletically, they're second to no one, and as they continue to gel, they're just going to improve this year and be a force. And so starting off with Roosevelt and then headed to, uh, uh, heading to Valley Stadium on the road next week with a showdown with Dowling, you know that's going to be a dogfight. Yeah. Well, again, Roosevelt, they have shown some different looks to Jake Ribley here tonight, and he had to backtrack quite a few yards just to get that ball away. Yeah, but we kind of had that conversation at halftime as, you know, Roosevelt shows such a different look than most of the high school teams around. They're sending somebody almost on every play, which a lot of times if you blitz, 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 you take yourself out of the play, but their defensive line is so well coached, they don't give up any gaps. Second and ten, good tackle there by the Rough Riders. Jaquan Bradley, the sophomore linebacker, Making a shoestring tackle there on Jaden Williams. It'll bring up third and seven with 5.20 to go here in this third quarter. Roosevelt looking to make a stand here while Valley is trying to keep the pedal to the metal here in the season opener. Ribley getting the call from the sidelines. Walks up to the line. Five seconds on the play clock. Ribley steps back, throws it, and it is deflected away by the Rough Riders. That was a pretty impressive play in all phases of this game. Quarterback under a lot of pressure makes a good throw down the field. Mahoney runs a very good route. The ball is coming in there. And Roosevelt, with a great defensive coverage, able to knock it away. That was just that was just a great football play all around. And guess who it was? The opposing quarterback, Jamison Patton. <laughs> so a phenomenal play of reading his counterpart, Jake Rubley. It is fourth and eight. The Valley offense is staying on the field. Roosevelt's defense coming in. Here's the throw downfield. Incomplete, well covered again. Savion Coleman Wilkes, the senior corner. And the ball there. Another nice job by a quarterback throwing their receiver open, uh, but right there at the end, closing the gap. Roosevelt defensive back, getting it knocked away. So now Jamison Patton. After making a great play on third down, now he's going to come back out and try to generate some offense for the Rough Riders. And we mentioned 
the upcoming schedule for Valley. We will cover Roosevelt's upcoming schedule after this two-minute break here on CISN.TV. Hi, I'm Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and this has been a crazy year. We might just run out of furniture, but we still have a great selection right now. We have wicker, we have fire pits, we have poly, and if you want something for your deck this year, you should come see us right now. Still have the greatest selection in Iowa at the best prices. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas, just west of Homemade. There's more to love with the savings at Fairway. This week, fresh salmon filet portions are buy one, get one free. Frito-Lay, Lay's, or Kettle Cook chips are only $1.99. Fairway waffles are buy two, get one more free. Kraft cheese is three for $5 when you buy three with your coupon. Fresh, fast, affordable. Fairway. Well, the students have made their way here into Valley Stadium. You see the president, uh, or principal rather, of Valley High School, David Maxwell, making sure that they are six feet apart. They were patiently waiting outside the gate, but the student section has arrived That's in the stadium. Right. And, you know, this is a good move because the students were way too close out there. And speaking of way too close... Big play down the field for the Rough Riders. On first down, getting the ball back after a huge defensive uh, stand by uh, Roosevelt, they make a play all the way down to the Valley 8. There is a flag. Farag with the catch. So the second sideline warning for Roosevelt, and it is a five-yard penalty assessed after the reception. It is. You know, it's an unfortunate thing. Your team gets so excited. They're running down the field. That is the biggest play of the night as far as yardage gained. They're excited. They're flying down the field. They get a little too close to the sideline in a, on a normal night. They get their warning. There's nothing, no big deal. It's just, all right, you guys stay back, but stay your, stay in the game. But because it was their second sideline warning, that's where it is. It's not a huge penalty for them. The momentum is still there. And Coger they still have number one. Gets the carry. Nasir Washington comes up with the tackle, but now Roosevelt is inside the 10-yard line. And, you know, another thing that we – talked about at halftime was the arm of Jamison Patton is just a sophomore. He can <laughs> sling it, and that time that was right on the money to Farag and Stride. It was. I I forgot where they started from, um, but I I saw an arm like that a few years ago when a young man by the name of Rocky Lombardi unleashed one in a playoff game. It looked a lot similar to that. And he's a pretty good player. Not too shabby. Ooh. A beautiful crossing route. What Roosevelt has lived off of tonight. Just a little bit of a, a lapse in focus there. Knowing you have it, it's going to be a touchdown, and it just gets away from you. Well, Unfortunate for him because it really was a great play. Asante Scott was the intended target. And he caught a few passes back in the first half. So now they Play clock has been reset. That's twice in this ball game where Roosevelt has dropped would-be touchdowns. It is third and six for the Rough Riders. We're down 26 to 13. Patton takes off. Finds the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Roosevelt. Well, he models his game after Lamar Jackson, and that was Lamar Jackson-esque by the sophomore, Jamison Patton. Great run there by Patton. He's back into the pocket, getting ready to throw a pass. The pocket broke down. Valley's D-line, the outsides, they came up. They were trying to keep that edge strong, but as they moved upfield, 
Patton stepped up into the pocket through that gap and made it around to the outside, scoring that touchdown. The extra point for the Rough Riders is through. What a third quarter we have seen thus far at Valley Stadium. Valley leading 26-20 to 20 with 4.07 to go in the third on CISN.TV. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 tracks, or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WaukeeChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Central Bank is proud to support the unmatched spirit of sportsmanship and hard work exemplified by our local athletes. We're fans of high school sports and the way the big game and hometown team rally a community. Best of luck to all of today's competitors. Play hard, have fun, and make something great happen. Central Bank, member FDIC. What a third quarter. Thus far here at Valley Stadium, 4.07 to go in the third as Roosevelt kicks it off after scoring a touchdown, but it is a penalty, it looks like, on the Rough Riders. Three points scored in the first quarter, and I'm losing track of the points <laughs> in the third quarter. It has become kind of like we, we were talking about in the first half. We kind of expected that defense to kind of hold teams together, but, man, an offensive explosion could, ha could have happened at any time, and it has. Roosevelt has outscored Valley 13-9 to here in this third quarter. Kick received at the 20 by Mahoney, and he will get to just about the 35-yard line. So we mentioned Valley's fans. I tell you what, from over here, we can start to hear the Roosevelt fans a little bit making their way over, and they have a lot to cheer about here tonight. They certainly do. They have a great squad, a great program. Uh, fan base is really starting to come together, putting, to, um, uh, putting together a, an, a culture that is going to be a force to reckon with. Well, earlier before one of our mandatory breaks, we did see Jaden Williams get carried off the field. As soon as we receive an update, we will give that to you. He's still walking on the sidelines right now. But before that, we were going to visit the upcoming schedule for Roosevelt. They will take on East at Drake Stadium next week as Rankins finds a seam to the 30. Oh. Stepped out of bounds. What a big play by Danny Rankins, who Keith came in for Jaden Williams earlier here in the quarter and hasn't lost a beat. Really hasn't. And we talked about, you know, earlier, he came in in the first half, we saw him, and we made the comparison back to last year with Creighton Mitchell and Jaden Williams, now Jaden Williams and Danny Rankin. Uh, a great job. What I'm really impressed with with Danny Rankin is he is able to create the separation just by doing kind of that limp leg like you're going to cut in and then cut back out to the outside. Rankins again, bringing defenders with them, nearly gets to the 25-yard line. So we have still not seen Williams. The last time we saw him on the sidelines, he did not have his helmet on. It appears as though he has his helmet on now, but the Valley coaches are keeping close tabs on him. But really... What a great luxury to have. You have your star running back who's going to Kansas State, dealing with some cramping here tonight, and you bring in Danny Rankins, who's just been a spark plug for he the Tigers. Been. And because of that, your offensive line starting to get a push downfield. Just like that, Rankins inside the 20 as Valley's run game is finding big success here towards the tail end of this third quarter. And we've seen Valley throughout the night. Whenever Roosevelt has made a big play, whenever they've scored, the Tigers immediately have been able to respond and looking to do so again right now. That's right. But you, we've also seen Roosevelt with that same response. 
Bad snap. Give up a score. Come back, score themselves. Now Valley back on the move. Uh, it's, <laughs> you know, there are times you talk about, you're watching a game and you talk about the response, which we've been talking about all night, but you never see teams respond this many times. <laughs> right. You're thinking at some point something's got to <laughs> give, but this has just been such an entertaining game to begin week one. We've been so lucky just to see this back and forth between two well-coached teams. This is what we've been waiting for for months and months. Terrified five months ago about what could be, what would be, and here we are. Rubley throws it to Raritan. Touchdown, Tigers. Uh-oh, a little bit of laundry on the field. A little bit of laundry. I'm concerned that somebody may have been downfield just a little ways. So we'll see if this goes against the Tigers, and it will. So very fortunate for Roosevelt there. Yes, Valley has had some uh, fortunate miscues by Roosevelt. Roosevelt's had some fortunate miscues by uh, Valley. But on the positive side, we are now seeing what we expected to see of these teams probably in midseason. We're seeing it tonight. Quarterbacks are meshing up with their receivers. Linemen are starting to get a push downfield on both sides. Defensive linemen are holding the line of scrimmage. Playmakers are making plays. And that's, of course, is what people tune in for, is the playmakers making the plays. Danny Rankins has been making plays. Trying to find some space, but nowhere to go. Roosevelt's defense catching up with Rankins behind the line of scrimmage. So that'll make up a third and long. Third and 17, in fact, for the Tigers. And the question now, if you don't gain yards, do you feel like you're in field goal range? Can you get three points on the board? Uh, what do you need to get out of this play? Um, if a miscue happens, could you still kick, or are you just at, in four-down territory? That is where the chess game is played. Rubley collects the snap, rolls out to his right. Pressure coming, and the Rough Riders get the sack. You could see Danny Rankin being there. He had, he had a guy in front of him. He had a guy collapsing in on the backside. Not sure which one to pick up. And because he didn't take the first threat, the backside came in and made that sack. And it is fourth and forever now for the Tigers. Skyler James, job. the junior, credited with the sack there. A great job, yes. You know, we've called multiple players tonight for Roosevelt. It's just a complete team effort on the defensive side. Multiple guys getting involved, the Valley offense. Staying out on what will be a fourth and 25. They're going for it. Rubley with plenty of time. And Raritan cannot bring it in. He has struggled with hanging on to the football here tonight. Probably wouldn't have been enough for a first down anyway, but a huge defensive stand by the Rough Riders who are only down by six. And they're excited. They know they have a big play offense. Valley's defense walking onto the field. We'll see what Roosevelt does with their offense, if they're going to walk out or if they're going to sprint out and get set. Uh, with the fans not here, it's hard to feel the energy. So we'll see what's going to be created here on the field. Again, can't state it enough just how confident this Roosevelt team was entering this 2020 oh. season flag on the field that was really unfortunate for uh the wide out here who's walking out to the official turned up field to see you know get a bearing as to where the defensive back was stepped across the line uh and was called for encroachment there so a quick five yard penalty and that was jack armstrong on the near side of your screen 38 seconds to go in the third quarter. Koger, he's been showing off the speed. Goes near side. 
And that should move the chains for the Rough Riders. Jaden Coger has had himself a night. Uh, the thing that has been really impressive about uh, Jaden Coger tonight is the fact that he's carried the load. He has been able to, so far, I don't know where he got all his water or where he's hiding it, but he's not cramping up. He is fighting hard. He has the power to go up the middle. He also has the ability that we saw with Danny Rankins to set up his own block and to create separation. I feel like, you know, when we talk about Koger and Rankins, there are two similar players. Big thump. <laughs> They're on the far side denying that completion. My goodness, this Valley defensive backfield has been laying the lumber down. They have. You know that hurt. <laughs> but it hurts a little bit more when you don't hang on to it. And that was Landon Nelson. Again, transferring from California as they are not playing football this fall. And he's made a couple big plays here tonight. Second down and 10 for the Rough Riders. Nowhere to go for Coger that time. Naba in on a great stop, shooting the gap on the stunt, uh, dialed up beautifully by Coach Randy Rebarger, and uh, a huge defensive play setting up a third and a bunch. There's Naba with the stop, and that will send us to the fourth quarter here at Valley Stadium. It's been a great one up to this point. You won't want to miss the fourth quarter. 26-20 Valley on CISN.TV. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 tracks, or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WaukeeChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. There's more to love with these savings at Fairway. This week, fresh salmon filet portions are buy one, get one free. Frito-Lay, Lay's, or Kettle Cook chips are only $1.99. Fairway waffles are buy two, get one more free. Kraft cheese is three for $5 when you buy three with your coupon. Fresh, fast, affordable. Fairway. We've reached the fourth quarter here on CISN.TV. Hunter Phillips, Keith Bornis, delighted to have you with us here tonight in West Des Moines. It's been a barn burner of a game. It didn't start off that way. It was 3 to nothing <laughs> after the first quarter. But, my goodness, both of these teams have settled in, and they've played some great football here to begin week one. They really have. It is exciting. And the people that are here, and I'm sure the people watching, this is what you really expect. You you want to see a great football game. You want to see the explosiveness. You want to feel the ups. Not necessarily always the downs, but it's a part of the game. So let's see what the fourth brings. It's third and 17 for the Rough Riders to begin the fourth quarter. And Jamison Patton has nowhere to go. Dragged out of bounds. Drew Henderson. We've called his name quite a bit here tonight. The rangy linebacker made the stop. It'll bring up fourth and long for the Rough Riders. And they'll bring out the punt team. But we saw the last time they had a punt it away. It was out of their own end zone, and it resulted in a safety as the snap was too high for the punter, Yona Abdullahi. So we're back to anticipating the uh, rugby-style punt to the right. Abdullah High. He's looking like he wants to go. Keeping the ball, kicks it at the very last second. There is a flag. More than likely going to be on Roosevelt here. That was a very impressive play by Roosevelt as he, he, hang, he hung on to the ball all the way through, bringing people up. It was going to, it looked like a run. And maybe for the most part it was, but right there at the last second was able to get that ball down the field. Uh, and it would have been a uh, nice 30, 35-yard punt, but uh, looks like uh, 
Coach Swenson is going to back Roosevelt up and make him punt it again. And we've seen Abdullah High kind of push the limits a little bit, but as a senior playing a lot of football, he knows when to get that punt off. But yeah. it has been inconsistent, though, here tonight from the senior as that was a holding call on the Rough Riders, and we'll do it again. And it wasn't just a holding call back him up 10 yards. It was a sp from the spot of the foul. So those can be huge. Another over the head snap. Abdullah High recovers it. Blocking Running around back. hastily. Should be a flag on Roosevelt. But nevertheless, Valley is going to have tremendous field position here on this upcoming drive. That right there is an incredible effort. Make no mistake about it. But it's also going to be a coachable moment as to whatever your coaching philosophy is. That deep into the end zone, uh, we saw earlier they gave up two points. Otherwise, it was going to be a touchdown. Down here again, you're in a situation, you pick the ball up right on the goal line, people collapsing in on you. Should you try to do what you did and let your defense play it out from the nine-yard line? Or should you just say, all right, well enough, punch it out, what's two points, it's makes it still a one point game or one possession game we punt it out of there and let the defense handle it from better field position valley to start at the roosevelt nine danny rankins and fill in duty for Jaden williams he's done a very good job here tonight doesn't get much on the first down carry and now it looks like williams is going to come back into the ball game he has had to come off the field twice due to what appears to have been cramping for the future Kansas State Wildcat, but he has done very well here tonight, had a four-yard touchdown run back in the second quarter. That was the first touchdown scored on the season for the Tigers. Nearly had another one just literally seconds later after Valley was able to capitalize on a turnover. Williams gets the handoff, goes off to the right, stiffs arm his opponent, and then goes out of bounds, but well defended by Roosevelt. There on the near side of the field, it'll bring up third down. Third down and goal from the eight-yard line. Uh, nice pickup of three yards there. But uh, as it's playing out right now, Roosevelt is uh, looking pretty good here as far as not giving up seven. We'll see what happens here on third down. Uh, two points versus three points versus seven points. It is something to discuss with your team. Jake Rubley, again transferring from Highlands Ranch High School in Littleton, Colorado, looking back at the sideline. And we will have a timeout on the field called by Roosevelt. And that means they only have one timeout remaining. So again, it stops play here with 10.36 to go in the fourth quarter. Did want to pass along a quick score update since the Valley Tigers will be taking on Dowling Catholic next week. It was a really close game throughout, but Dowling defeated Indianola in Indianola 25-14. to So again, that was the final down in the south portion of the state, and that'll set up again if Valley can take care of business tonight. Two teams that made it to the state championship game last year. A lot of history there, to say the least. And uh, obviously don't want to look ahead. Still got tonight's game, but a big matchup in the horizon here in West Des Moines next week. Well, right. And you, you say it's tonight's game, but at the pace we're going, it, we could still be playing here tomorrow. <laughs> uh, midnight's not that far away. So, yes, you don't want to look ahead. You got to get through tonight. Both teams excited, but at the same time, it's taking a toll. It's going to take tomorrow and Sunday and for a lot of these guys to recover. So how coaches handle tomorrow's lifting and running and uh, loosening up and film sessions is going to be Hi, kind of I'm key Chris for both Fire teams as they get into and next week as they play. And Jaden Williams on a power run. Eight yards for the score. And I'm telling you, he brought all of Polk County with him. <laughs> that was power. Well, how about that? 
Out of a timeout that was called by Roosevelt, you just give it to your stud back, Jaden Williams, who is as powerful as a back as you'll find here in the state. And that has to feel really good after missing most of this third quarter early on with an agging injury. We do have a flag in the back of the end zone. Uh, we'll have to count and see how many people are out on the field. A legal substitution for Roosevelt. So for Williams, that was his second rushing touchdown of the night. Last year had 12 rushing touchdowns. And you hear from our Head official Michael Hansen of that penalty will be enforced on the kickoff from Valley. But this to make it a 13-point lead for the Tigers, which would be their largest of the night. Kick is on its way, and it is good. The running game prevails once again for the Tigers. They punch it in. Jaden Williams with his second score of the night, 33-20 Valley on CISN.TV. At MidAmerican Energy, we put our energy into making communities stronger, safer, and ready for the future. We support STEM education and community safety, special events, and economic development activities. We energize our cities and towns just like we have for decades. All to help make your community the place where you want to build your business, your legacy, and your life. It's another way we're obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 Trax or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WalkieChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WalkieChevy.com. Back here at Valley Stadium. 33 to 20. Valley over Roosevelt with 10 and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Hunter Phillips and Keith Bornis back here with you. And man, what a good time for, for Jaden Williams to, to get back <laughs> out on the field. And we know how punishing of a runner he is. He really showed it there to break through that Roosevelt defense to get his second touchdown of the night to open up this lead for Valley. Absolutely. And you know, Jaden Williams, he makes that touchdown. He doesn't go and raise his hands to the fans or anything like that. He goes over, finds his running back coach. They're sitting down talking about, all right, here's your path. This is where we need to go. Way to fight through that. But there may have been just a little easier path. You hit the hole a little straighter. Meanwhile, Roosevelt trying to climb back in this one, facing their largest deficit of the night. Jamison Patton taking off and getting a few yards. And we've seen some good things out of Jamison Patton here tonight. Uh, did have uh, an interception uh, earlier in the ball game, but otherwise he's he's starting to get in his groove. But for making your first start against a Valley defense, that's, that's a lot to ask for. Well, yeah. You, I think you can literally ask the question because Roosevelt's going to be successful. They have the tools to do some great things. So let's ask the question, what is Patton going to be next year? What's he going to be in two years I think there's a gold mine right there sitting in his hands and uh, when he has that experience down the road the sky's the limit that's right I think and and the football purists are going to be the ones that say I want to watch it I want to see what he does because he has made some dazzling plays here tonight not just on offense, but he also made a really good play on defense as well as a safety coming in to swat away a pass from Jake Rubley. Third and 15, and nowhere to go for Jamison Patton. As good as Mr. Patton is, it's hard to break out of the grip of Mr. Washington. Uh, Nasir Washington, again, showing why he is right there as an anchor to the uh, Valley defensive line. Well, and as he jogs back to the sidelines, you could just see his frame and just how big he is. That combination of 
strength and speed has been on display here tonight, making plays in the open field, making plays at the line. He has just been a difference maker for this Valley defense and really setting the tone here tonight. Absolutely. Uh, I kind of... I kind of feel pretty good for Miami of Ohio. <laughs> the Red Hawks are in, in good shape. Awkward punt. Takes a Valley bounce, and Roosevelt will field it at the 31. So Valley, once again, will have very good field position with 8.40 to go here in this fourth quarter. The Tigers leading the Rough Riders 33-20. to 20. And we mentioned that Roosevelt, they will be facing East next week. It will be a home game in East tonight taking on Lincoln on the road and it's been all rail splitters leading 39 to 13 late in the fourth quarter in that ball game all right and time we, to water and sanitize i think we'll take a water break as well 8:40 to go here in this one we'll be back after this on cisn.tv make this summer one to remember with these savings at fairway this week, USDA Choice Top of Iowa Sirloin Steak is just $4.99 a pound. Stella Bella Green Seedless Grapes are only $1.88 a pound. Ritz Crackers are just $1.88. Coca-Cola or Sprite products are four for $9.98 when you buy four. Wishing you a fun-filled summer from our family to yours. Fairway. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 tracks, or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WalkieChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WalkieChevy.com. 8.40 to go in the fourth quarter. Valley back on the field, leading 33-20. to 20. Jake Ribley, play action. Tosses it, and that time finds his big tight end, Eli Rairdon. First catch of the night for the junior tight end, and that has to feel good because he's dropped a few passes here tonight, but the confidence of Ribley to go back to him knowing, hey, you're open. I'm going to keep throwing you the ball and just keep making those plays that we know he can make. That's right. The connection has been there. Several times tonight, it's just about finishing the play, not looking upfield too soon, concentrating, focusing it in, catching the ball with your hands, then bringing it into the body. Uh, yes, that connection we have been waiting for all night, and it happened. Ribley back to pass again, rolls off to his left and has to throw this one out of play. Ribley in his Valley debut with a rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown here tonight. Now, we were recapping some of the scores around the area. Now, after Valley takes on Dowling Catholic next week, they play at number four, Southeast Polk. And let me tell you, folks, Southeast Polk is a dangerous team. They win in Waukee, who was ranked sixth, 21-10. to 10. So they hold Waukee to no points in the second half as Waukee was up 10-7 to 7 at half. So Southeast Polk with a big win to begin their 2020 campaign. Williams, spin move, but then it's brought down. That'll be close to the first down marker. A little bit of laundry on the field. We'll see what happened over there. Oh, got a hold, so instead of an eight-yard gain, we're going to have a at least, oh, the hold was closer, so it's not going to be as much of a killer. A lot of times we don't look at uh, what, how many yards a penalty is. We look at how many yards the penalty was when you include what had happened. So, you know, you have a big run with a, a penalty play. Sometimes a 10-yard penalty actually is a 50-yard penalty because you didn't get what you gained. So there uh, end up being a 12-yard uh, penalty when you look at all the things that could have happened for Valley. Yeah, it drops Coach, them back yeah. to second and 13. That's right. Coaches just look at things a little bit differently. <laughs> than. But it's important. And, you know, for Valley tonight, they have had their number of penalties. One thing they'll look to correct. But one thing they don't have to correct is the arm of Jake Rubley finding Kale Nessheim for the score. 
and you could see the wide receiver on his break starting to gain that uh, separation, and Rubley wasted no time. He got back, he got set, and he threw a dart. And now, as Nessheim finishes up this drive, he is the holder uh, on this PAT attempt. Kick is on its way, and it is good. Jake Rubley with his second touchdown in the air, third overall on the night. Tigers starting to pull away here against Roosevelt, 40-20 to on CISN.TV. Central Bank is proud to support the unmatched spirit of sportsmanship and hard work exemplified by our local athletes. We're fans of high school sports and the way the big game and hometown team rally a community. Best of luck to all of today's competitors. Play hard, have fun, and make something great happen. Central Bank, member FDIC. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. Without question, the COVID-19 pandemic created many disruptive changes in our lives. Some of us got sick, jobs and income were compromised, it was difficult to even spend time with family and friends. But one thing hasn't changed, and that's Westside Auto Pro's commitment to quality service, and that will never change. We're here to make sure you get maximum performance and reliability from your vehicle. So as we all move forward, keep Westside Auto Pros in mind. You've been through enough. We'll make sure your car is the least of your worries. Valley to kick things off. Out of the break, 7.24 to go here in this fourth quarter. Valley leading by 20, pulling away from Des Moines Roosevelt. 40 to 20 is our score. And what has been a fun opening night of football here across the state of Iowa. So talking about the three phases of, the, uh, of a game, the kicking game, it had, that phase of the game has definitely been won by Valley tonight. Kickoffs going into the end zone. Corral had one after the penalty. It landed down in Indianola. Crossing county lines, he kicked it so deep. <laughs> uh, He's been able to put it into the end zone, pushing uh, Roosevelt back to uh, a tough starting position. Um, punts, uh, Valley's been very consistent. Uh, the rugby style punt does not always allow for consistency in yardage gain. It can be very dangerous, both to the receiving team and to the punting team. But yeah, we've seen Valley's special teams really shine here tonight. But you know that the really good teams are going to start to take over in the fourth quarter, and certainly that's what Valley has done after Roosevelt was able to get a turnover and capitalize on it to begin the second half. Flag is thrown as the pass is complete down on the far side of the field. Looks like this one is going to be going back for Roosevelt. As, uh, as you start to get into these late uh, plays of the game, uh, you're in a situation where you have worked so hard all night. You lose some type of focus where, in this situation, they didn't line up correctly. Uh, there are other times where, as defensive linemen, you, or an offensive lineman, you lose focus for a second, you get behind on the snap, and then all of a sudden you got to make up for it by a hold. And so this is where teams really have to bear down and uh, keep their heads about themselves and stay focused in the game. Second and 14. Short pass completed. But a nice play made by Landon Nelson. Jaden Coger made the catch. Oh, that wasn't number 20. It was number 50, but then when he right. came up, his jersey was tucked in. Didn't, Bobby didn't Cobine, the senior. Well, Bobby Cobine knows how to take some people down. <laughs> He's been wrestling his whole life. And uh, so Coach Young, pretty excited about uh, the possibility of Cobine this, uh, this uh, winter season. Well, and also make that tackle inbounds, too. Right. Keep that clock running. And Roosevelt has to burn their final timeout. It'll stop play with 
5.55 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Valley up by 20, and we do want to update you on another score. The last scoring update that we had between Ankeny and Ankeny Centennial, how good are the Ankeny Hawks going to be? They won the last score I got here, 48-6 to over Ankeny Centennial, who is a top-10 team as well, well coached by Jerry Pizzetti and company. But the Ankeny Hawks, they got some guys, their offense – is explosive, especially through the air, and a team that Valley is going to face later on this year. Yes, you take a look at what these teams have done over the past. You know, we remember uh, the this year's senior class with Ankeny. Uh, when they came through as freshmen, they were just a dominant group that has stayed together and just kept building their momentum as they've gone. Uh, then you take a look at another class that came through, and it's, Southeast Polk's junior class that is really uh, showing some great uh, signs. Uh, and they had a great win. So, yeah, you take a look at what the, uh, the top ten across the state is, and you take a look at what Valley's schedule is, it's an uphill battle all season long. Yeah, it is going to be a gauntlet for Gary Swenson's Valley Tigers. Pass incomplete. That'll set up fourth down once again for Roosevelt who just has not been able to find anything here in this fourth quarter after they were able to outscore the Tigers in the third quarter. But you got to give a lot of credit to Valley just wearing down this, this Rough Rider team. And again, going back to what we talked about leading into this second half, just winning that battle at the line of scrimmage. It's mm -hmm. been pretty evident here, especially in the fourth quarter. Absolutely. And now it's going to be kind of a question mark of, all right, what, what, needs to happen for the overall health of the team here uh, do you leave your starting quarterback in or do you take hey we're up 20 with five minutes to go let's go ahead and put the sophomore quarterback in valley's own sophomore uh, aiden price number 13 i i half expect to see him to come in um, very athletic young man but we'll see I kind of saw him throwing the ball around on the uh, sideline a little bit. I see him standing there next to Coach Swenson, so I'd say that's a good chance. So a penalty by the Rough Riders moves things up even further for the Tigers, who have scored two touchdowns here in this fourth quarter, an eight-yard run by Jaden Williams, and then a 22-yard strike from Jake Rubley to Kale Nessheim to bring that score to 40 to 20. That looks like we will have a new quarterback in for the Tigers here with just over five and a half minutes to go in this ball game. So some good experience here down the stretch. High snap, Price able to uh, collect. Still and, on his feet. Yeah, do everything he can just to start falling forward. All right. Mr. Price, you got the jitter play out of the way. Now we can see what you got. Uh, finish this night out. See what happens as you go along the year. Last year as a freshman, uh, Aiden was a backup quarterback. He was a, a running back he was a wide receiver he was a defensive back uh he was kind of all over the field and how valuable is that the quarterback spot where you've played multiple positions so you've seen those different vantage points it has to help you out as a quarterback especially someone who's still really young in his high school career right and to understand how defensive backs are typically coached and uh how they're going to play and being able to get a pre-snap read on whether, hey, is this going to be a zone defense? Is this going to be a man? Is it uh, cover four? Are we looking at cover two? So, yeah, hopefully he's going to get some good experience here. But uh, the flags are kind of moving Valley in the wrong direction. Because it's not just a new, new quarterback that's in. We have some new players along the line. And... Uh, so that's going to uh, possibly shake things up a little bit here. We do have our final mandatory timeout, officials' timeout of the evening. We will step aside and we'll 
conclude the rest of our ball game here in West Des Moines on CISN.TV. Make this summer one to remember with these savings at Fairway. This week, USDA Choice Top of Iowa Sirloin Steak is just $4.99 a pound. Stella Bella Green Seedless Grapes are only $1.88 a pound. Ritz Crackers are just $1.88. Coca-Cola or Sprite products are four for $9.98 when you buy four. Wishing you a fun-filled summer from our family to yours. Fairway. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 Trax or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WaukeeChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. 4.23 to go here at Valley Stadium. And what has been a long night for week one here to begin the football season. We've crossed the 10 o'clock hour, so that means the game has been just over three hours. Obviously, got to include halftime, but it's been a fun night it of has. football. It really has. Um, granted, limited seating, but of the people here, nobody's leaving. And that's just a testament to both of these teams as that pass falls incomplete. A nice job by Aiden Price as he rolls to his right, and he delivers the ball on target. Nice job up over a linebacker, uh, just unable to hang on to it by the receiver as uh, Eric Benke was the uh, target there. So Valley will punt this one away. They've scored two touchdowns here in this fourth quarter. They led 17-7 at half, but this was just a 3 to nothing ball game after the first quarter. It was a long feeling out process in that first quarter, but both of these teams have delivered a great opening night for football. Another great punt by the Tigers, and they will down it. At the one-yard line. That was a great job. Now, we're probably going to have this penalty back here just be a running into uh, the punter, and so Coach Swenson will have the option to re-kick or uh, give the ball to Roosevelt on the one-yard line. So I'm guessing we're going to uh, see Roosevelt take over on the one. That was an incredible job in the special teams again by Valley tonight. Yeah, one of those unsung heroes tonight has to be Dawson Stein, especially when you go back to that low-scoring first quarter. He really flipped the field, and yes. for him to be just a sophomore, I mean, you know, Valley's had some good punters. Kirby Vanderkamp is one that comes to mind, but, yep. man, Dawson Stein's looking really good. He is looking real good, and the other thing that <laughs> he hasn't seen before is a rush as fast as Roosevelt has put together, and a testament to him to be able to uh, get those punts off and have good punts because more than likely that rush isn't going to end after tonight. It's going to keep coming by the opponents that he's going to be seeing all season long. So the Rough Riders, who have put up a valiant effort here tonight, they are going to be a great football team this year, are back at it, trying to end this game on a high note. This guy right here, number one, he has been stellar. Jaden Coger. They say oh. he stepped out of bounds on the Roosevelt sideline. They already have two warnings over there, but <laughs> they were not happy as they thought that Coger stayed in bounds there on um, the far side. That had the potential to be a tie for the longest run in high school history because there's no such thing as a 100-yard uh, touchdown run. That being on the one-yard line, that would put him with, and there are several people that have 99-yard touchdown runs uh, over the course of football history, but it it is so few and far between from year to year. Well, he uh, had an 80-yard touchdown run last year, Coger did. This time met up by the Tigers up front, nothing going as he is stuffed. But Coger tonight, especially there in that, Second quarter and then third quarter, really active. Yes, indeed. Had a 20-yard touchdown reception back in the second quarter 
and then added a 23-yard touchdown run back in the third. Jamison Patton, the sophomore quarterback, dumps it off left side. And that should be enough for the first down for Roosevelt. Jakari nice. Bradley with the reception, his yeah. third of the night. Great catch, good pass, great catch. Nice job by Max Barr coming up and uh, making the play defensively for Valley. Third and one, so they did not get enough, but they give it to Koger. He's been the go-to guy for the Rough Riders, and that makes it a first down. Cobine with the stop. 2.45 to go in this one. You know, I got to give – I got to give Roosevelt's coaching staff a shout out for how they responded to uh, Koger stepping out of bounds. Whether he did or didn't, you go fight for your athlete. Say, no, he didn't step out of bounds there. So you got to be happy to see the passion that they st they're still playing with uh, tonight as this is in the uh, later parts of the game. Fumble. Looked like Roosevelt got on top of it. Ball was caught by Asante Scott. And the Rough Riders do get on top of the ball there at the 30. I believe that was Jakari Bradley that got on top of it. So heads up play by Bradley as the ball spilled out of the hands of Scott and running over to grab it. So now they have first and 10 at the 30. And, and again, for a team like Roosevelt, that's what we've seen from Mitch Moore. He is a competitive guy. He loves to motivate his team, and again, it's playing until the clock reaches zero, and you could tell on that particular play there that it lifted up the Rough Riders to make that big game. Absolutely, and this is a great drive by Roosevelt that started clear back on the Valley 1. We're going to have a, an athlete come out of the game now as his helmet came off. So uh, I didn't catch the number on it, but I did see the helmet fly. So anytime that happens, your athlete has to come out for a play. 120 to go here in this season opener tonight at Valley Stadium. Bad snap, but Koger there to retrieve it. Players slow to get up for Roosevelt. <laughs> And that, that is Braden Hartwig. Yeah, that is a great heads-up play by Koger. I've, I've actually seen when it's a, a, a mishandled snap or a bad snap and the ball just kind of bounces around, ends up in the wrong person's hand. I've actually seen that happen where the person who ends up with the ball actually turns and tries to give it to the person that should have had the ball. But Koger had the wherewithal to just get upfield and uh, get some extra yards. And that's what you like to see if you're a Rough Rider fan, if you're any of the coaches, that they're still making these heads-up plays here and knowing that, you know what, the season just started. And so if we can get some kind of momentum here in the tail end of the game, that can help us in practice leading up to their game next week against Des Moines East. That pass was caught just a couple yards shy of the first down marker. That was fourth down anyway. So Valley will take over and get in victory formation. That wasn't easy for the Tigers. We knew that it wasn't. We knew Roosevelt was coming in with a chip on their shoulder. But mm -hmm. what good teams do, they, they find ways to win. They find ways to respond. And Valley was able to outlast Roosevelt here tonight. Yes. Uh, a fun game to watch. And... Uh uh, I'm going to tell you right now, pleasure to work with you. Pleasure to work with you as well. You what? A lot of fun having a young man that uh, with some West Des Moines roots come in here and uh, do this. Um, yeah, feel right at home. Yeah. A lot of fun. Our hardworking crew as well, led by our producer, Anna Bassett, and our cameraman, doing just such a great job here to deliver the pictures and sounds to all of you at home. We apologize for any of the technical issues earlier here on the night. You know, it's week one. you got to get those things out of the way, but we're on YouTube streaming live for free. It's, you know what, you know, kind of like Valley tonight. You know, some things happen, technical issues. You respond, and we're able to get the broadcast together. So kudos to everyone with CISN.TV. Pass. 
Penalty on Roosevelt. It'll move the ball up for the Tigers, who have it with just over 33 seconds to go. More than likely, this should be the final snap of the night. Monte Mitchell, junior running back, comes in to make his first appearance of the night. Aiden Price still under center for the Tigers. Roosevelt showing blitz again. There's the handoff to Mitchell, and he gets dropped for a loss. Danny Diggins, or excuse me, I believe that was Christensen with the stop. But that will be it for the Tigers. The preseason number one team had a test from Roosevelt tonight, but they're able to outlast the Rough Riders to come away with a 40 to 20 win to open up the 2020 campaign. So congratulations to Coach Swenson and the Tigers on their first win of the season and Coach Moore and company for Roosevelt. Nothing to be ashamed of here tonight. They had a great showing against the top ranked team in the state. We're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll recap all the action on the post game show next here on CISN.TV. At MidAmerican Energy, we put our energy into making communities stronger, safer, and ready for the future. We support STEM education and community safety, special events, and economic development activities. We energize our cities and towns just like we have for decades, all to help make your community the place where you want to build your business, your legacy, and your life. It's another way we're obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 Trax or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WaukeeChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. There's more to love with the savings at Fairway. This week, fresh salmon filet portions are buy one, get one free. Frito-Lay, Lay's, or Kettle Cook chips are only $1.99. Fairway waffles are buy two, get one more free. Kraft cheese is three for $5 when you buy three with your coupon. Fresh, fast, affordable. Fairway. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. Without question, the COVID-19 pandemic created many disruptive changes in our lives. Some of us got sick, jobs and income were compromised, it was difficult to even spend time with family and friends. But one thing hasn't changed, and that's Westside Auto Pro's commitment to quality service, and that will never change. We're here to make sure you get maximum performance and reliability from your vehicle. So as we all move forward, keep Westside Auto Pros in mind. You've been through enough. We'll make sure your car is the least of your worries. They're celebrating here at Valley Stadium. The top-ranked Tigers defeat the Roosevelt Rough Riders 40-20. to A hard-earned win, you would say, for Valley. Knew it wasn't going to be easy against Roosevelt, but all in all, you know, football aside, tonight was just a huge success because we had football back. It really was. And, you know, uh, you out there watching the game and ready here for the uh, post-game, Usually how this works is, you know, whatever the, however long the game was, the post-game wrap-up is only half of that. So for the next hour and a half, <laughs> we expect right. you all to be here. Uh, you know, just kidding with that. But it really was great to have this sense of normalcy. However long it lasts, we had a sense of normalcy uh, being a part of uh, school, being a part of practices being a part of this game and uh so we thank everybody that was involved in making this happen tonight because it was certainly something that both sides needed just to feel Absolutely. a sense of normalcy so the game got off to kind of a slow start valley led three to nothing after the first quarter but then they were able to notch two touchdowns there in the second quarter roosevelt was able to score as well valley led 17 to 7 at half 
And then a third quarter where Roosevelt really showed some fight. They were able to outscore the Tigers 13-9, but then Valley blanking Roosevelt there in the fourth and final quarter, really flexing their muscles there, outscoring the Rough Riders 14 to nothing. And it just seemed like, you know, the word of the night was really a response. And the Tigers, they had to face adversity throughout times here tonight. They had a couple untimely turnovers, penalties, you know, things that are going to happen week one. But good teams find ways to win, and the Tigers did that. Absolutely. And um, on the flip side of that, as, as great as Valley was able to finish, um, you have to give so much credit to them because they held Roosevelt after that incredible third quarter that Roosevelt mounted. Valley held them, and they were able to find a way. Um, holding a, I'm going to say he looks like a fifth-year senior as a sophomore quarterback for Roosevelt, holding him in check and forcing some um, uh, errant passes. Then you take a look at the final drive that Roosevelt had, starting on their one-yard line, almost a 99-yard touchdown run coming out of the chute, stepped out of bounds. Roosevelt fought, fought this thing all the way through. And so uh, I'm reminded by uh, something that a former Valley athlete said many years ago. Uh, there was a comment made in the paper about it was a cross-country meet, and the Valley runner was second overall. We were ecstatic for her. said, man, what a great job. And she said, but did you see what that other girl said? She said she wanted it more to me than I did, and that's why she won. I guarantee you she didn't want it more than I did. She beat me, but she didn't want it more. And I, that's something that Coach Moore is going to be talking to his team about. Yeah. yeah, Valley beat us tonight, but they didn't want it more. We'll see what uh, he does with that. We'll see what Coach Swenson does with this. But two very good programs scoring off tonight. What a way to start the season. Yeah, an impressive start, no doubt, for the Roosevelt Rough Riders. Jaden Coger, the senior running back, he had a heck of a night. Like you said, he nearly reeled off a 99-yard <laughs> uh, touchdown run there. Uh, what would have been back in the fourth quarter had a 20-yard catch. That was the first touchdown of the year uh, for the Rough Riders, and then he added a touchdown run as well. And then Jamison Patton, a really impressive debut from him. He did add a touchdown run. Uh, as well from nine yards out. But let's talk about the other quarterback here quickly, Jake Rubley making his first start with the Valley Tigers, had to pick up this offense really quickly. And, you know, it, it was going to be a little bit shaky at first, but all in all, got to say, he had that touchdown run, sneaked it in from one yard out. It really seemed like that built his confidence in the pass game. He was able to hook up with Matthew Mahoney for a 10-yard touchdown uh, pass there. And then – Kale Nessheim, I think, quietly had a really good game tonight, yes. and they developed a really good connection, had a really uh, good reception there to end the first half. And then, of course, that 22-yard touchdown pass uh, in the fourth quarter. Rubley, all in all, a really solid night. I, and I was very impressed with his composure, not only tonight, but throughout all of this. Because when you take a look at what really transpired, somebody moving to come to the state of Iowa to come in, somebody that's as highly touted as he is and he's going to go to Kansas State. And everybody thinks this kid's going to set the world on fire. Anything shy of him being a 10,000-yard passer this season is going to be a disappointment when it comes to social media. And all the things that he has faced and all the things that uh, Coach Swenson has faced on social media with all this thing blowing up, both Coach Swenson and Jake Rubley have kept everything in check and a very good, solid second half after Rubley was able to shake a few things off. Yeah, I'm looking for some great things out of him, and I was pretty pleased just the way he carried himself with all the distractions that are going on around him. And touch on the run game as well for the Tigers. We know how good it is year in and year out. Jaden Williams, he battled different things here tonight, ball security, a lingering injury in the third quarter, but still had a fantastic game. Two rushing touchdowns, nearly had three. And how about a guy who came in, Danny Rankins, and just was a spark plug? I mean, if you're Coach Swenson, running backs coach, you have to be pleased with how Rankins was able to come in and just be that that go-to guy that showed a lot of speed out on the edge, filling in nicely for, for Jaden Williams. Those two complement each other so nicely, and it was tough for Roosevelt to stop. It really was. And you, you talk about uh, not only how good both running backs are, but how tough they are. 
Um, Danny Rankins, he must be wearing pads that are 110 pounds <laughs> because he's not that big. He's a tall kid. I mean, he's got uh, room to grow on him, but uh, he's not all that big. And he took some hits, and he delivered some hits. So, yes, the um, zigzag straight-ahead performance by, uh, and I say that, zigzag straight ahead. Danny Rankin is able to do a lot of things athletically. Uh, Jaden Williams, but he is so emotional, guts straight ahead type of guy. Uh, it could be very fun to watch those two in together in the backfield or alternating in the backfield. And the final point I wanted to get to, how about the Valley defense here tonight? A lot of guys got involved, and it really seemed – like the secondary, again, just hard hitting. It disrupted a lot of what could have been plays for this Rough Rider team here tonight. But Nasir Washington, I mean, hello, Mr. <laughs> Washington. He was all over the place. Drew Henderson had a great game. Mason DeBrava, of course, he was able to cause a fumble uh, back in the second quarter. Uh, the Valley defense, uh, they were they were ready to hit here tonight. They were. And, uh, yes, congratulations to uh, Valley. Um, best to Roosevelt, hard-fought game. Somebody always goes home disappointed with the loss. You always say that, hey, you got nothing to hang your head about. Well, Coach Moore might say, listen, fellas, I expect more. And because he's that type, he's going to get more. So, again, the Valley Tigers get the win here in week one, 40-20 over Roosevelt. The Rough Riders will be at home next week. They will take on Des Moines East. Meanwhile, a game that you will see right here on CISN.TV, the big matchup here in West Des Moines, the two rivals, Dallin Catholic, taking on the Valley Tigers. It'll be a top five matchup, the rematch of last year's state title game. You won't want to miss that. That'll be a 7 o'clock p.m. kickoff here in West Des Moines. Well, that will do it for us. It's been a long night for us, but thank you to our hardworking crew and for our producer, Anna Bassett, for my broadcast partner, Keith Bornis. I'm Hunter Phillips signing off from West Des Moines here at Valley Stadium on this Friday night. And thank you for watching Iowa High School football here on CISN.TV.